she did not run away. We were just hoping that whoever took her would just bring her back. I can't believe it's been that long. In some ways, it seems like it just happened. This is Misty right here. Kelly Carlson, and I'm Misty's aunt. Got a phone call from my my nephew, who just said, Missy's gone. He said, somebody came in the house and took her. She was taken out of her bed. Jeff Sage, who manages the apartment, shows us the window the alleged kidnapper reportedly crawled through, taking Misty while her two brothers slept inside. He saw the man come in of the bathroom window, and he was so scared that he, he laid still, and he didn't hear any other sounds, and then he had fallen back to sleep. When he woke up another hour or so later, Missy was gone. We just started going door to door, checking the apartment complex. Within an hour of not being able to find her, we called the police. The two officers that showed up when we called them that first night were really convinced that she had just run away. It didn't seem to register that, you know, someone had literally broken into the house and then she was gone. They were telling us things like, well, she'll probably turn up, she probably ran away. Misty wasn't the kind of child that would have taken off and, and ran away anyway. She was a very innocent child. And on the television, there was a news program and they were pulling a body from the river. We turn and in pulls the police into the driveway. We knew then that there was something very wrong. still remember it like it was yesterday, seeing her tiny little body there. There were what looked like to me to be bruising. Her hair was still wet. I remember asking the coroner, how long had she been in that water? And he said only a couple hours. When Misty's body was found, she was only wearing a t-shirt and jeans. Initial autopsy reports show she drowned and had no damage to her feet. Police searched the shoreline and bridge for shoes and a jacket, but they never found any. And there was no possible way for you know an 11 year old girl to get from her house across that bridge without somebody seeing her. My sister completely just mentally went away. I felt like I lost my sister and my niece that same day. It really was unsettling. It was very terrifying. It definitely changed our lives. My name is Nicole Peterson. I am Misty May Micheletti's cousin. It wouldn't be until February. A month later, before her death was ruled a homicide, when lab reports came back, indicating that in fact she had been sexually assaulted. Since 2018, the genetic genealogy community has solved over a thousand cases. My name is Lisa Lewis, and I am a forensic investigative genetic genealogist. From 1994 to now, the technology has improved so we can get a lot more DNA out of a lot smaller samples. It's really hard for us to even wrap our brains around how small of a sample is needed. I'm not sure what DNA is left to be able to do that type of technology now. This is information that we're not really privileged to through the police department. 10 years ago, they submitted clothing and there was nothing. But maybe now, with new technology, more DNA could be found. Vancouver police tell us if there is viable technology to solve Misty's case, they'll use it. Her case is still active and detectives continue to follow leads. <laughs> Look at how pretty she is. Not knowing is, it makes you crazy. After 30 years, I don't know if I'll live to see the closure. Misty May Micheletti deserves 
justice. It's time to solve this, and it's time to bring justice to Misty and to her family. Whoever did this, we're gonna find you. We're not gonna stop until we do.